space and a half. I don't get your I don't get your coffee. Oh, I'm cheating though. <laughs> oh, huh? No, I broke this. This, bicycle this little finger. This little finger. Don't even ask. Me. Yeah, everybody says that. I think I said just eat Twinkies and forget about the rest. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to give Bev a bad time. I didn't really want coffee. I just wanted to give Bev a bad time. She Good evening and welcome to the October 28, 2013 regular meeting of the Waterloo Community School District Board of Education. Just a couple items were uh, starting a little bit later. We just had our, I guess, director district convention that we'll also have on our agenda here now for the AEA 267 Board of Directors um, election. We'll go through that in a little bit. And then a couple other things. Angela Weekly and Andrea Sparks, two board members, um, are uh, um, one is out of town and the other one is... Uh, um, recuperating I guess so they will not be here tonight um, but I will um, now call the meeting to order and now please join me in a moment of silence thank you now please rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. And I will now read the school district's mission statement. The Waterloo Schools community commits to a comprehensive system of education and support to assure that each and every student will graduate prepared for college, career, and citizenship as evidenced by a continuing education, pursuing a career path, and contributing to a community. All right, that takes us um, now to the AEA 267 um, Director District uh, Convention. And what we're going to do, we already had our vote. There was um, uh, an applicant for the board, um, Brian Burton, and he was elected and then voted on as a school district's um, representative for the AEA 267 Board of Directors. Um, and for, But we'll go through now and get a motion on the table and then we'll vote on this motion as well, basically to confirm and affirm um, the action we just took about 20 minutes ago. But that way it'll be in our um, board minutes um, and our meeting minutes now. So um, with that, I'd rec er, the recommended motion is that the Board of Education affirm its vote for Brian Burton as the director District 8 representative to the Area Education Agency 267 Board of Directors. So moved. Thank you. And a second? Second. Okay. And just quickly um, for discussion and background, Director District 8 um, is essentially basically the western half of the Waterloo School District going all the way from um, the northern boundary to the southern boundary from the airport um, down almost to Orange Road. Um, and it's, I guess, the only director district in the area education agency that is entirely within one school district so Waterloo has the only vote so the board of directors the school board votes um, for the director and that's what we did um, earlier this evening any questions or discussion okay if none um, all those in favor of the motion please say aye aye, aye. opposed nay and the chair votes aye motion carried now this takes us next to um, a board celebration, and it's a, a very good uh, program that we'll hear about tonight um, regarding PBIS, which is Positive Behaviors, Behavior Intervention and Supports. Um, this is for information only. We won't act on it, but um, we've got a number of people here, including Mindy Fisher, 
um, I'll invite up to uh, come to the podium if you could just make sure that green light is on. Um, but I will turn it over to you to talk about um, PBIS. Also, there was just a, in Chicago a national convention um, recently. So, Mindy, please. Thank you. There Is that better? So um, Bunger was an example that we used through the AEA 267 and working with the University of Oregon and they um, their data is just phenomenal and it really sh it speaks for itself on reduction of referrals. Expo and Henry Shepard's here to speak with um, what they're doing but Expo um, is one of the only alternative schools that's implementing PBIS to the extent that Expo is at all the different levels and so um, I'm going to let them talk now, so if you guys want to come up. Kristen's in the pink, and Josie's in the stripes. Not very tall. <laughs> Welcome, right, ladies. So again, I'm Kristen Hinders. This is Josie Evanson. We're from Bunger Middle School. Um, Josie is one of the counselors, and I'm actually a literacy uh, sixth grade teacher, along with my coaching jobs. Um, we really focused on data for our presentation uh, when we submitted our poster that's really what we wanted to do because that's something that we're really proud of. Um, last year we noticed uh, disrespect and defiance referrals were our highest problem, the biggest number that we had. Um, and so we really kind of hit hard on that. We focused every Monday on some kind of respect um, lesson, activity, something for the kids to do. We looked at it in all areas, not just in the school, but in social situations, at home, uh, in the nation itself and um, saw a really big dramatic decrease in our referrals, which those of you that were out in the hallway noticed on our board right away. Um, another really positive for us has been our events. Every month we try to hold two events for the kids, um, dodgeball, bingo, board any games. board games. Uh, we played capture the flag this year uh, as a way to kind of celebrate the students that are earning tickets and acting smart, which is bungers. Um, so we've been really, really pleased with the way PBIS runs at our school. We don't view it as an initiative for us. It's just part of Bunger. We don't really think of it as PBIS anymore. It's just what we do. So, do you have anything to add? I feel like personally as a counselor, um, the PBIS program that we have um, allows me to look at data all the time. And it allows me to look and see where our hot spots might be, you know, like Kristen said, with the defiance and disrespect. And it gives me as a counselor some real insight to maybe what's going on. And so then I can pull out some of those students and just work on some manners and conflict resolution and just lifelong skills that um, the students are going to need for the rest of their life. So for me as a counselor, I feel like it really helps um, our kids not only stay in the classroom and, you know, um, get their academics, but it also allows them to have some one-on-one, -on -one, um, real small group, social life skill, um, you know, lessons that maybe they wouldn't get if we didn't have PBIS um, to narrow it down and really make us look at that data. Yeah. In closing, just to kind of toot our own horn, uh, Susan Bruce, who is the PBIS coordinator for the state, uh, actually approached jo Josie and I at the um, conference in Chicago. Uh, and then emailed us upon our return to Bunger uh, and interviewed us for an article that she's writing about the conference and PBIS at Bunger. So I'm excited about that. On, too. <laughs> on, on your uh, poster out there, you have four areas, mm -hmm. scope areas. Yeah. One of which is is uh, bus behavior. Mm -hmm. Could you just go through how you learn about those incidents? and how you take care of those? Uh, so we actually teach a bus lesson right at the beginning of the year. The bus is harder because it's an outside entity. It's not necessarily 
you know, our Bunger employees running the PBI program on the bus. Um, so we have had to have some conversations about what are being written up as minors, what are being written up as majors. So we really look at our matrix when an incident happens on the bus and does it fit within our matrix of is this a minor thing, you know, are, if they were written up for a major referral because their feet were in the aisle. Is that really a major or is that in our minor matrix? And we have it very clearly in our matrix, matrix what's a minor versus what's, what's a major referral. Do so that's been something we've been challenged with is trying to communicate with the drivers what do we consider a major referral that you actually physically go in to Infinite Campus, write it up, versus we're going to let the principal know, but it doesn't need to be a fully documented entity, I guess. So do you ever uh, review the bus, bus videos? Yeah. Our, our administrators do that. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've seen them before if there was an incident. Um, and a bus you know, driver would ask us to look into something. Um, but usually our administrators handle all of that. Mm -hmm. But um, overall, we definitely make sure that our students are acting appropriately on the bus. And like I said, it's, we just look at that data constantly and see if there's a hot spot. If we notice, while you know, two, two weeks in a row we've had some bus incidents, um, we already have built into our um, day on Monday mornings to focus on our smart behavior, that safety, bus, you know, manners, achievement, responsibility, and trustworthiness. And so if we notice that we've had a bus problem, that Monday, all of us as a building will sit down and talk about it and figure out, um, you know, reteach some things and try to figure out um, how to resolve the problem. So you have any communication with the bus drivers? Most of that's done through administration. I mean, I do bus duty But she does day, bus duty. So I'm out there talking <laughs> with them, and they see me, and I see them. And so, um, so if there's ever a problem, I can talk to them. But usually it's our administrators that deal with that. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yep. So my name is Henry Shepard, and I'm um, assistant principal at Expo Alternative Learning Center. And one of my responsibilities at the building is um, the administrator for our PBIS program. We are beginning our third year, and really it's our second year of collecting data. Um, our first year, we were just getting our feet wet and kind of learning about what PBIS would look like in an alternative setting. And as you're all pretty familiar with Expo Alternative Learning Center, it's not just one program in that building. We have multiple programs out there. So as Man uh, Mindy mentioned, um, one of the reasons we were selected to present at the national conference was just that. Um, not just because we're an alternative school implementing PBIS, but we're an alternative school implementing PBIS with about five or six different programs and making it work, um, to be quite honest. Uh, at the conference, we were just bombarded with school districts from around the country who were interested in what we were doing here in Waterloo at our um, alternative site. I had a lot of questions. The last day of the conference, um, Lucy, or not Lucy, Lucille Ebert, Lucille Ebert um, approached me and asked me to write a proposal for next year's conference um, to actually be a presenter. This year we were poster presenters uh, in the evening, which was great and it's a way to get your foot in the door, but she noticed we had a lot of traffic, um, a lot of people who are approaching us and then talking to her about this. In fact, this week we're doing two PBIS celebrations in our building, and the one that I'm hosting, we are going to do a, a live feed to two different schools in different states so they can see what we're doing, um, and they're both alternative schools. Um, so we're pretty excited about that. Um, and as I said, we have just been collecting data um, last year and this year, really, um, and looking at that data. And already this year, we've seen a decrease. Um, if we're looking at our three different floors, uh, last year, August, October, we had 43 um, suspensions, major referrals, uh, on one floor. This year, that same floor has gone down to 31, um, same amount of time. Um, on the WebC floor where I'm at this year, we had 11 last year. August to the end of October. This year, we've had five. Um, we have another program that um, I'm over. It's called the other programs, but it's um, like our after-school programs, Bridges programs. It's, a, it's, it's, the, other. it's the other ones. <laughs> um, and last year, during that time, we had two, and this year, we have three. So technically, we increased by 50% just because we went up one. But, um, you know, we, what I really like, and I think... Um, you know, the ladies here talked about, too, is the nice thing about PBS is it allows us to look at data. I am constantly um, getting on 
Tableau um, or other data sources that we have and pulling data. And I know on the programs that I work with, I can tell you what kids have received those referrals and what they're for. And so um, on my floor, the, where it says we have five, well, we've had five referrals, five majors, it's been between three kids. Not five kids, three kids. We've identified those kids and we brought them in. They're now involved with our tier two and tier three teams. Every floor in our building has a tier two and tier three that looks at kids that are getting referrals or getting um, sent to the intervention room or suspensions and they can um, offer suggestions. So for those three kids on our floor, we've got them in individual um, counseling. We've got them in small group anger management and emotion, uh, what is it? emotional response, how to deal with their own uh, emotions in an appropriate way. Um, we've hooked them up with mentors. We've got them in in a check-in, check-out, which I know you guys use at Bunger as well. So it gives us opportunity to really focus in on that student. We work with their families, and if they have people they're working with outside of school, we bring them in as a wraparound kind of service and really do all that we can to try to help those students be successful instead of just writing referral after referral. So you have an objective measure of number of referrals and that's gone down, but so, so what confidence do you have that the subjective part of that, the definition of what's a major, what's a minor, and the reporting of that is consistent so that you know fewer referrals actually mean better behavior as opposed to fewer referrals mean uh, everybody's working toward the same goal of fewer referrals and, and just kind of <laughs> turning a blind eye sometimes. Um, I, I don't think the latter is the case. I really do think um, we do a nice job at our building of the same kind of thing. I think when you implement PBS and you do it with integrity, your whole staff has to be involved. They all have to buy in. And it's not just about teaching these skills to the students. It's also about teaching it to the staff. And so we spend um, the beginning of every school year with a big kickoff with our staff and talking about what PBIS is, what majors are, what minors are, um, what you would write referrals for, what you would get shine slips for. In our building, we give shine slips, and that's because we want all of our students in our building to shine. And that stands for students having integrity, new direction, excellence, and sensibility. And so we talk about what that looks like. We had a video going out here. Um, and so the video shows the students in every area, including the bus, what it looks like to shine in those areas and what it wouldn't look like. We take about a week to 10 days at the beginning of the school year, and we call it our PBIS University, where every teacher every day teaches the same lessons. So they're all getting the same information. It's pretty um, consistent. So. It's not like I'm teaching my students to shine in one way and, and Josie's doing it in a different way. They're all getting the same information. And then we reinforce that um, at the beginning of each quarter, we repeat those lessons. Anytime a new student comes in, we have them sit down with a staff member or a student mentor, go over the video, talk about it, introduce them to our PBIS program in our building. We do the same thing with staff. So, so where does your... Uh scope in terms of the individual student begin and end if uh, uh, is it on the bus is it at the bus stop is it uh, walking to the bus stop some kids say they're they're bullied or whatever or walking away from it mm -hmm. what, what's the total scope ours, ours encompasses anything that is going to affect them as a student mm -hmm. if it even if it happened on Facebook the night before we do with it okay <laughs> if it's a problem the next day in school it, it falls within the scope of are dealing with it and our kids know that up front we even mm -hmm. we tell them that right away texting falls into that the Facebook if it's an incident that happens while they're waiting for the bus in the morning we'll deal with that as well all that's included okay thank you I think so I really felt I've actually been on the team since my first year here in the Waterloo district um, so for me it's really been just kind of something we do so I can't really compare it a lot with what the climate was before, but it just feels really positive. I know it seems silly because it's called positive behavior, mm -hmm. um, but you're not always disciplined. It's not, discipline is not your automatic go-to. Your go-to is how can I address this positively in order to still help the student without just saying you need to go sit in the hallway or you need to go sit in the office. Um, and so I feel like, yeah, big time climate change which is why I said I don't really feel like it's an initiative it's just kind of what you do yeah this in the language I yeah mean, yep. I think that even just hearing us we all kind of speak use the same language <laughs> our kids say all of it. it it's just 
you know, our bunger culture mm -hmm. kind of how, you know, and this year, um, my administrative role switched, and I'm the administrator for the WebC programs and those other programs. <laughs> and, you know, um, even the staff have commented on those floors just, you know, the change this year already. And um, people just feel comfortable and relaxed. There's not a high stress level. Mm -hmm. um, we do a really nice job um, of when we write our shine slips, <clears throat> excuse me, our shine tickets, they're carbon, so we give a white copy to the student, the yellow copy goes into a box. That's how we keep our data. At the end of the month, um, my wife, who works in our building in Grad Connect, she tabulates all the results for us. She's on our PBS committee. So we know what students got how many and what they got them for and what teachers gave them. Um, and so we use that throughout the whole year. But the white copy, we would approach the student. So if I wrote one to Dr. Barney, then I would not just put it in his teacher's mailbox. Um, or slip it on his desk, I would make it a point to go and talk to him, you know, because when students mess up, we make it a point to call them out. Mm -hmm. So when they do things right, we want to call them out. So I go over and I address him, and, when I, and we really work hard with our staff that when you write on there, you write, you write it as if you're writing a letter to Dr. Barney. Dr. Barney, today I noticed you demonstrated excellence in the lunchroom when you did X, Y, and Z. So you're naming the behavior, you know, you're publicly recognizing him for those appropriate things. And that's all part of what makes PBIS work, I think. Well, that and I think the mutual respect component, that's one thing I've heard students talk about, yeah. is that it's going both ways. It's, mm -hmm. it's them respecting you all, but I think you all coming with bringing ideas and, like yeah. you said, it, whatever the situation may be, how do I address yeah. this in a positive way, which gets back to we respect. Actually, we actually have a lesson at Bunger that it's called My Job, Your Job, where teachers actually have to fit their own actions within our SMART framework. So it's not yeah. just the kids who have to be smart, it's the adults. <laughs> and I think it really made, especially when we first implemented it, it really made teachers think about how you speak to students. Yeah. Um, kids know that. Kids yeah. pick up on that, yeah. especially yeah. our middle school and high school Absolutely. kids. They're smart enough. <laughs> Absolutely. Yep. They can see But, you know, it. we, um, our staff, everybody, even our bus drivers, custodians, everybody has a little, the shine packets mm -hmm. that we have out there on our table. And they write those, and the students can turn those in for, um, you know, they can save them up for the coffee house at our building, or they can use them to redeem things at our school store if they need a new book bag, a water bottle, pencil, whatever, we got them in there. And, and so the slips are kind of like their currency. But I've even had students this year come and ask if they can write a slip for a staff member. I mean, that's pretty cool. I have been extremely impressed with PBIS, with the program, but also how it's been implemented and going over the last, was it four years now? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it, it, you can see it develop consistently in all our buildings. It's a little different in each building that you see and, and kind of how it's implemented. I mean, everybody tailors it a little bit, but it, it, I'm a believer in it. At first, I wasn't quite sure about it. I did some research and found out, you know, it's definitely legitimate um, <laughs> a, a type of thing. It's coming from the Department of Education. It's based in research. Yeah. But it's very much research-based, <laughs> yes. And, it, and data coming from the, well, the U.S. Department of Education, but also, and I think it's at basically at education centers at a number of universities around the country. Well, and I think just like we said, you, we can pull the data at any time. And if you look at the data and you see that you have higher referrals last month for inappropriate language, well, then we need to build in some lessons this month on appropriate exactly. language. Exactly. It tells you exactly what to do. And I, Exactly. And I think some of the natural skepticism that just – human nature that Lyle alluded to is, okay, well, if our numbers are down in referrals, does that just mean it's the exact same behavior, we're just writing less referrals? And, but uh, to look beyond that, you look at things like, um, uh, well, some of it in terms of data, what we've seen at East and West with the climate surveys that have gone through. Yeah. And those numbers, I, I think, have taken pretty dramatic jumps at both. Um, those are from students. So that's some data that would feed into that, that no, it's not just the same behavior and it's just we happen to be writing less referrals that um, mm -hmm. the behavior is actually improving. And also you see it in the culture, and I know from the two schools my kids go to, I have seen it um, at different times in different schools, but um, really over the last couple of years it's really gotten in and worked very well. So thank you to all four of you for your work in that and, and many, many others. It's, it's something we are very proud of. It's great work that's going on in these school-wide PBIS programs. Um, thank you for all you're doing. And, keep and up I, the great work. I just wanted to say I appreciate you guys being here this evening, but your enthusiasm is uh, contagious. Thank you. <laughs> thank thank you. you. Thank you.
can we get these? Uh, I just wanted to suggest maybe we could get these folks to help out some of our other schools in the data collection and how Absolutely. they have been able to show uh, much more progress than maybe some of the other schools. And maybe we could carry that over into some of the schools that aren't seeing quite the improvement. It's a good idea. So I have to add something really quick just so you guys know this. We are down from two years ago 4,000 referrals across the district. We had just under 12,000 referrals at the end of the 10-11 um, school year, or 11-12, excuse me. And at the end of last year, we had just barely over 8,000. So when you're looking at that data, we as a district have really come a long ways. So district-wide, not just these two, but these two are great. Yes, it's fantastic. <laughs> Mindy, thank you again. Thank you, guys. Thank you. All right, and our next item on our board agenda um, is another very good thing. Um, is while this is information from the Gallagher Blue Dorn Performing Arts Center on the um, some of the programs they've got with their schools, and we have um, with us Amy Hunzelman, um, who's the director of um, educational and special programs with the Gallagher Blue Dorn Performing Arts Center. And she's here with Crystal Buzza to give us some information on uh, on this. As they're getting set up, I just noticed the timing's right. Um, yeah, Kathy Gallagher passed away um, about a week and a half ago, but Ed and Kathy Gallagher and, and Carl and Peggy Bluedorn both did an amazingly good thing for the Cedar Valley with the Gallagher Bluedorn Center and a number of other people as well. But now I'll turn it over to Amy. Thank, so you. thank you, and congratulations um, again to the PBIS program and the success of the district. Uh, my husband teaches in Old Wine, and they are in the process of finding those uh, strategies for lower uh, rates as well. So I took some great notes, and uh, we'll be uh, when you hear something great, you uh, repeat it and copy it and steal it, if you will. But uh, definitely the shine slips is something that I'm going to share with him tonight. So. Uh, we're very lucky uh, to be partnering with the Waterloo Community School Districts on many different levels. Do I need to use this? To do this? Okay. On many different levels, an at-large uh, community partner for a number of years. I'd just like to highlight a couple of the programs that we do uh, partner uh, with the district. There we go. Uh, three of the programs I'd like to highlight tonight is the uh, Kaleidoscope Series for Youth, many of you may know about that, the Kaleidoscope Connections Program, and then a Professional Development for Teachers. The Bus in Matinee Series is probably something that most of the community and performing arts uh, venues throughout the United States have. So it's not unusual, but of course uh, we are unique in the sense that we offer it for a dollar or a buck a kid. Um, and all of our performances connect to a curricular content area with the more popular titles being a literature or historical uh, event. Um, but the performances also address character education, um, other cultures, and the arts as well. Through the course of the past 14 years, uh, the series has served uh, just a little over 365,000 kids. And we're on target to surpass the 400,000 mark at the end of the school year. Our first season accommodated 15,000 students uh, through generous donations from Allen Hospital, the Friends Group, the Gallagher, individual donors. Um, and we're able to serve at least about 35,000 each year uh, for that $1 mark. So the yellow highlighted counties are the counties that we've served in the past 14 years. Wondering how we get out west, and we've partnered with local venues, uh, community venues, or, or high school school venues. That's why we've been able to go to Red Oak, or Fairfield, or Spirit Lake, uh, Old Wine, New Hampton, Marshalltown, etc. cetera. Uh, the, the series not only exposes students to the arts, but also connects to the classic classroom curriculum. Uh, it also provides a common and shared experience for both rural and urban kids. Uh, it's probably the only program in Northeast Iowa that provides such an, an experience and opportunity for that shared experience. Looking at data, we all like that, <laughs> and it also helps our story. Uh, naturally, the Black Hawk County is the largest county that we serve, and the community, uh, Waterloo, as well. Um, at this point, my understanding is that each individual teacher in building has the choice of which shows to choose from. Some teacher comments and feedback. Um, it's fascinating to, to see that this is no longer a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. We can no longer use that slogan. 
Um, but the, and that's okay because kids are now coming to the Gallagher, having an experience about six or eight times throughout their K-12 journey. And I would like to extend the opportunity for you to join us on a Kaleidoscope Day if you have not been there already, not to only experience the, the live arts and culture, but to see how logistically we move 1,600 kids in. Uh, by our fabulous team of ushers, volunteer ushers, get them into the hall um, and then back out in a very nice single file line. The upper grades probably don't like to do the single file line too much. but uh, Another program that we do is the Kaleidoscope Connections, which is a partnership with the college's um, education college, education department. Uh, this is twofold. It serves primarily K-6 and also the UNI education and theater students. The goal here is to deepen that cultural experience for classroom students. What exactly are they missing school for? Why are they getting on the bus besides just to see the show? They provide and um, develop their own pre and post lesson. And again, this is a teacher choice um, to either um, participate in the program or else we seek them out as well from our list of uh, sh schools that are attending. It aligns with the district's field per, uh, trip permission slip uh, for teachers by providing that pre and post activities and discussion. Um, it's also a national model for both the performing arts side and also the higher education uh, institution. Students were able to show off their creativity, increase the comprehension of the story through performance arts, uh, drama uh, activities and games to be specific, and to learn the very basics of a play in preparation for the trip. We're uh, very pleased to be a partner with the school district since 2003 with the Kennedy Center in Washington, D.C. Uh, this is one of uh, 100 national partnerships throughout the United States, which focuses on professional de development for teachers using arts strategies. Uh, this is a model where the teachers are actively participating as individuals and in groups using art strategies to teach the core content areas. And on the left-hand side are some previous workshop titles. More specifically, through that umbrella, the moving through math curriculum is something um, that was integrated in the district's um, math guides about 2011, I believe, when we rolled that out. And this is now fully integrated into the math guide for uh, all kindergarten and first grade teachers. Uh, it does support and align right along with the investigations model, for example, allowing students to make sense of mathematics and uh, the ability to work individually, in pairs, small groups, and whole groups as well. The goal of the math, the moving through math, is for teachers to know uh, the difference between math, memorization, and comprehension, how to clearly articulate the math thinking, through clean language, math language. We also want the teachers to be able to facilitate lessons in which students use their bodies and to facil facilitate lessons in which students collaborate with their peers. And the picture on the right is demonstrating right angles with their body. That is the end result of the lesson. An observation by a, a an uh, elementary teacher, students seem to pick up or understand the concepts being taught much more quickly than traditional methods. Uh, they seem to enjoy the lessons much more as well. I'd like to end with a second grade geometry video of some students on the East Coast.
question. Come on over for a show with 16,000 kids, or 1,600. Thank you for all you're doing. And I don't think I've seen one of the Kaleidoscope um, uh, programs, but I, I have seen a play, and we well, talked about the logistics of getting the kids in and out. I was a part of that, and I was amazed. I was extremely yeah. impressed. But it's been such a, um, a positive experience um, for the students, I know, this school district, but also for our community as well. So thank you for all you're doing. Thank you for your time. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Thank Amy, thank you. And I, I learned a lot too. On, uh, I think we all, uh, not all of us know exactly what the math angles are, but <laughs> we were impressed. Obtuse, is I, that the word? I, 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 knew <laughs> I know obtuse, but, <laughs> but that's it. Touche. Gets the kids out of their chairs and moving yes, around a little yeah, bit. Yeah, exactly. Too. It's the other benefit. Yeah, exactly. That's why I know obtuse. Yeah. Um, all right, the next item on our agenda is Exhibit D. Um, it starts on page 10, and it is um, some information about um, trademarking logos um, for the school, and there are three of them. They're in a board packet on pages 11, 12, and 13, and Crystal Buzz is here um, to give us some information on that um, and the work that's been done. Uh, no, so Crystal, we'll turn it over to you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, as you'll note in the board packet, on February 8th of this year, uh, the Waterloo Schools officially submitted um, three applications to be trademarked. One was the District Globe logo, just the globe itself, um, and then also the East High Trojan logo and the West High W logo. And really the reasoning... Um, why we decided to do this was actually back in uh, 2011 we had started to be approached a lot more by different vendors about having our marks out in the community along with um, check cards and then we started seeing all these different versions of logos and at that time it was really decided to really help the integrity of all of our logos that it was probably in the, our best interest to consider trademarking and actually since we've started this we have learned that many districts have decided to do something like this as well. So back in, um, well, I guess then going forward in the spring, it was probably about April, we found out that we could start using the TM buyer logo. So we started to do that a little bit. And now we found out in October that our marks have been officially registered. And so this will be a process for us. We're not going to take down all of our signs everywhere and redo them. But as we go through getting things out to vendors, it's important that we make sure we're using the right logo. Um, and then as we go into stores, we, you know, as the merchandise turns over, they should be updated with the registration mark. And the real huge benefit that I see is mostly with East High School, where the Trojan Head has had many different versions. He has faced a number of different ways. And now we have have one way for him to face and one look um, and when you do the registration of marks you actually just register the black and white version that does not mean you cannot use the colored version of the logo you're certainly welcome to do that but the the thing that um, the United States Trademark Office actually keeps on file is the black and white versions of those logos Crystal, do they have the PMS colors, though? Are they part of the... We did not do that. Okay. No, we just did the logo. However, we have set standards of an actual Pantone color yes. for West High and for East High. Um, and we do have some colors with the globe, but it, and that's where it gets hard because there's a lot of shading in the globe, so we don't have one distinct color. We know the family that that globe fits into as far as the colors, and so that's something that we're doing, and we're just going to continually to educate and nudge everybody to make sure they're using the right logos and it's in the right place and so um, I've already been called the logo police already a few times when I've said I think you have the wrong logo. <laughs> so. As I look at this trademark it says for the East High Trojan 1956 so this symbol has been used since then? It, yeah, well, this, so what you do is you go back to the most recent version or the, the oldest version that you can find of it being used. It doesn't have to look exactly like this okay. um, that we've been guided, but actually this version that we've finalized on is really pretty close to what the original logo that we were able to find, and we found it in a yearbook. And so it's really pretty close to how he is supposed to be. And so... The oh. specification then includes not only the, uh, the graphics, but the Pantone colors? Not the Pantone colors. 
just the way it looks as a district we will decide that we really want the logo to be this particular color but as you will know a lot of times in business some businesses are very good about when they do their shirts that it's only one color however there's this new phenomenon of tone on tone embroidery on shirts so for example if my shirt was a solid color gray um, a lot of times people embroider another gray on top of it and so if we were to just trademark it we could only use that option Ever. Um, and as we've learned with the West High logo, it was this old rose burgundy, which really doesn't necessarily exist, and it didn't have the actual um, CMYK numbers associated with it. So we found the color that they have been using for the past about five years. I don't know if that helps answer your question. Well, kind of what I was getting at, how do you, how do you judge whether someone is using it a, unauthorized, and B, out of spec. What, what we would know is that coming from um, school and community relations, so from that department, there will be the logo that has the registration mark on it. They're probably the only ones that can really do it the right way. Now, if I wanted to, I could go with my Pantone color book and go up and match it because I know exactly what the Pantone color is. I probably won't. But you can tell pretty close once you start using it more what the actual Pantone color should be if we want to match the oranges. Um, sometimes for vendors for athletic equipment, they have a very short range of colors. They don't do the entire spectrum based on printing processes. So we can't, we need to be flexible, and that's how it is for a lot of um, schools are and colleges you know they need to be a little bit flexible as well. There's a lot more to this than yes. <laughs> otherwise, but thank you, for, thank you for your work on it. Yeah, I don't, had it, it probably had never been done before with previous logos. Is that correct? Not, not for okay. ours, no. Not for nope. ours. Okay. Nope. Thank, thank you. you. Sounds Chris. great. Thank you for all your work on this. Thank you. Any further questions? All right, Crystal, thanks again. We'll then move on um, to the time when we. Uh, um, that we'll hear from anybody in the audience that wishes to come up to speak. Um, and I'll read a card right now um, regarding that before we start. Uh, we have now come to the time when those who wish may speak publicly to the board. I would like to remind each speaker, whether you represent yourself or a group, that you have three minutes to speak during this portion of the meeting. Uh, Mrs. Arndorfer will hold up a yellow card when you have 30 seconds left and a red card when your time has expired. At that time, I'll ask that you conclude your remarks. Waterloo is a national leader in character counts, endeavoring at all times to... Uh, promote and model the principles of trustworthiness, responsibility, respect, fairness, caring, and citizenship. Throughout our meetings, we commit ourselves to these principles. And lastly, at no time is it appropriate here to criticize the job performance of a specific employee of the district because personnel matters are confidential and must be handled through proper channels and not in a public forum. So at that time, I'd like to invite anybody who wishes to address the board to come forward and just state your name and your address, please. Good evening. I'm Charlene Mishler. I live at 319 Center Street in Waterloo. I am a bus monitor for Durham School Services in the Waterloo School District. I drive out, we drive out of a high school and an elementary school here in Waterloo. Our elementary school, we have 65 students on our bus. Four of them are special needs with uh, behavior disorders. Um, We've been told that our bus writes the most referrals of all the buses and, and the school. But we have a lot of issues on those buses. I remember when uh, the board originally approved and signed a contract with Durham when they came in as, as your provider that uh, it, uh, you had said that we'd be more than welcome to meet with some of the drivers and some of the monitors at different times to talk about things. Well, that has yet to happen. There's some of us that would like to meet with some of the board members and would like to meet with a superintendent and some of the staffs because there are some things that we think you need to be aware of. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Charlene.
My name is Dale Willie. I live at 2648 Saratoga Drive. Before my three minutes uh, starts, I'd like to uh, tell Lyle that they do make uh, training wheels for bicycles, Lyle. <laughs> <laughs> um, they, they, on September 12th, as many of you know, I was knocked unconscious and beaten on a school bus as a bus driver. I lost my route because of that. I'm here to ask you for my route back. And I say it this way, for this reason. The principal, when I called him to ask for my route back, asked me, I asked him if he'd ever been in combat. Had I been able to fit in my combat uniform tonight, I would have worn it. But he said no, and then he turned around and asked me if I'd ever been a principal, and I said no. <clears throat> All I want is the ability to go back and bond with those kids and I'm, I, I will, I'm, this is God's truth, you can ask Orange Elementary. But a week ago, I got to go back and take my Orange kids home. When I stepped off that bus to ask what route I was driving, I was bombarded with kids grabbing my legs, giving me hugs, high fives, and crying. I had two teachers crying. That's how important these elementary kids are to me. And as a whole, a bus driver will end up making a bond with the younger kids and that bond carries all the way through high school <clears throat> i have kids that are now in high school that come up and see me that i've had at carver for three years and they still to this day remember me i'm asking for my route back i am not afraid i'm i let that guy hit me only because i knew if i raised a hand it would have been worse. So I'm not afraid. But I want the chance to go back to Central. I want that chance to go back to Orange. And I want to bond. And that's all I want, is I want that chance to make everything that you folks do behind there and in this building, I want you to be able to have that chance to make everything that you do come to fruition. So I'm asking for my route back. I probably won't get it. But that's how sincere and how much I love what I'm doing. These kids mean the world to me. <clears throat> and if you'd have told me 30 years ago after being in the Marines and being at John Deere that I was going to like being a school bus driver as much as I do, I'd have said you're crazy. But they get under your skin. They really do. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Any anybody else? Okay. Hearing none, we'll move on to the next item on our agenda, which uh, tonight consists of, and this is our consent agenda, um, which is next, which tonight consists of the minutes of our October 14th, 2013 regular and special board meetings, personnel appointments and adjustments, bills due and payable between board meetings, and then finally board members travel to the um, IASB convention and possibly the Cedar Valley Coalition trip. Are there any items that board members wish to be removed from the consent agenda? Okay, hearing none, ask for a motion to approve the consent agenda. So moved. Thank you. And a second? Second. And discussion. Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Uh, and the chair votes aye, motion carried. That then takes us to, it's actually the last action item on our agenda, um, regarding um, modified allowable growth request for special education. This is on page 32 on our board packet. It's Exhibit I. And the recommended motion is that the Board of Education accept the recommendation of the Finance Committee and approve the request um, to the School Budget Review Committee for allowable growth and supplemental aid uh, payment for the negative special education balance, balance of $1,511,384 for the 2012-2013 school year. Even though it's coming from a committee we can still go ahead and get that motion on the table with a motion and a second. Okay, thank you. 
second. And second. Okay, in discussion. Michael Coughlin um, couldn't be here, but we the Finance Committee had a uh, meeting last week uh, with Mr. Coughlin, also Dr. Barney, um, and Dr. Norris um, to go through essentially what the request is to the School Budget um, <laughs> Review Committee, the SBRC, um, that meets regarding this request. And at this time, I may turn it over to Dr. Norris or, or Dr. Barney. Thank Dr. you. Norris, uh, yeah. Thank you, Mike. Um, this is um, a request that uh, is happening, of course, in the Waterloo School District. And um, as, as we have uh, noted to board members, uh, it's, it's all too often that uh, special education is a, a very expensive commodity. And that, um, a, as Dr. Barney's done a little research, he's found that a great or a significant number of other districts, including UEN districts, have mm -hmm. uh, spend more than uh, the state actually allots for uh, special education. We have, uh, in doing this and in making this request tonight, we though have um, done an extensive review of our uh, of our year last year and subsequent years. You notice in on page 34, uh, you see a three-year run there. Uh, Dr. Barney, Larry Martin, and Amy Alfrey have been working on this for about a month or so, or maybe two months, and uh, have a plan in mind that, or not, not, not only in mind, but a plan in operation that we will, uh, our goal is to come in with a, uh, a zero balance, if you will, in other words, try to end our spending at about the same amount that we are taking in in revenue. And so that total, if you look at 2013-14 um, over on page 34, and you go about halfway up, uh, there's a line there that uh, the, the best calculation we have right now is we're going to take in about $30.6 million. And uh, our expenditures to date, we have identified and narrowed to $30.8 million. But uh, we have about three or four other items we're working on, including uh, Medica Medicaid re reimbursements and um, staffing, uh, freezing staffing would be the two biggest ones. Mm -hmm. And so we're asking the board tonight to do what you did <coughs> a year ago with ELL. Uh, receipts what again in what school boards all over are doing and then with the assurance uh, that we've uh, taken a look and we're developing um, systems just to make sure that we're not uh, overspending in areas where we don't need to be and that we're spending the, 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 the uh, resources and the staff on the kids that need it the most And just to follow up what we talked about in the Finance Committee, um, we talked about this at length um, on Tuesday, I guess it was, the last week. And a special education budget is kind of a different animal in that you can, in some ways you're encouraged to overspend it because you can ask for more allowable growth because of that, that I don't think you can do with general education no, and Iowa or anything else. Um, so some of it comes down to actual spending, but in some ways it also comes down to allocation. Um, we talked at great length about how do you allocate costs for a building. Um, and we've talked a lot about busing tonight, but if you have four students on a bus that are special education, but um, uh, let's say 50 students uh, who are general education, how do you allocate that bus route? Um, for budgetary purposes and it's kind of those questions that we've been going through as well um but it's when well, there's just a whole lot more to it um than that i guess than the overview i'm giving right now but it's uh yeah and the the only other thing i failed to say is many of our many of our expenditures were planned and were targeted and were yeah. working really hard to increase uh, graduation rate and student achievement among special ed mm -hmm. students. And so we just want to make sure we continue to keep 
targeting on those students that need it the most. Mm -hmm. And I guess I'll come in. I'm, I'm supporting this, uh, at least for this year, especially with the target, with the understanding that the target is zero uh, for next year and that every effort will be made by the, uh, the team led by Dr. Barney, I guess, to and the changes that I heard during our, our workshops was there's an opportunity for closer management and closer supervision of the entire staff and costs of the special ed education budget, uh, still in conjunction with the school principals, but a little bit closer supervision on your part. And that uh, kind of the key element there is to staff to the collective IEPs of those students in that particular exactly. school mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. at that particular time, not necessarily staff to each individual IEP, but gather them together and say, what's the best program we can, we can uh, supply within budget for that collective number of kids. And, and with the caveat that if in some cases, you know, it just can't be done, then come back with us. But other than that, we would expect a, 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 a mm -hmm. Stay within budget. Mm -hmm. So, I, if that's the understanding, then I can support it. On that. You have our commitment. Yeah, and and that's a very good point. That's what we talked about at length on Tuesday. Is that regard, but also looked into it. All right, what's the spending on? And I think the spending. I mean, to put words in anybody's mouth, but all of it seemed legitimate. It seemed pure. It seemed designed to raise student achievement, and some of it was allocations, frankly, as mm -hmm. well. We also asked, though, what are other comparable districts doing and so we looked spent a lot of time looking at other UEN districts and kind of the core UEN districts and the As, expanded uh, 12 looking at Cedar Falls for example yeah. um, um, looking at like Marshalltown Mason City those sorts of sizes of districts I would say most of those per capita and total had higher balances than we did we're probably um, much above both per capita um, per student they had but also just the, the bigger numbers I'm trying to think a couple districts were pretty far out there meaning three, they three four, million. three four million that they had overspent their budget for special ed now in some ways you're encouraged to do that because of the allowable growth factor um, the bottom line is still the bottom line this is these are above line um, accounting um, uh, factors that go into it but um, it, I think we came away from the meeting thinking we've there's a pretty good plan in place going forward and figuring out how we're seeking reimbursement um, how we're spending the money and how it fits in with general education budget and a, and a number of those were operating within budget as well oh yeah very yeah. much they were. yeah oh, so yeah. you know it, I think I think the plan that mm -hmm. was discussed at least during our work session and yeah. it's right. pretty solid and Mm -hmm. Well, and I think it's one of the areas that we saw that um, a little more accountability, you know, there were different fingers spending from the pot, and I think more accountability mm -hmm. of that in, from a one source will help. But also, I think uh, it was mentioned the curriculum was more standardized, standardized mm -hmm. which I felt was very appropriate because we had done a lot of curriculum overhaul throughout the district and, mm -hmm. and this is an area that specifically needed it, mm -hmm. you know, outdated and not consistent. And I think that um, mm -hmm. this is critical that we provide that also. And I guess in going through this, you know, the special ed funding is just a very complicated process. And, and I guess um, how we shoot for that moving target it sees how good our arrow will land in the middle, you know, and I just think we can go either way a little bit, but it's always the goal to go in the middle. I think. Well, and I think uh, over the last few years, it's also given us an opportunity to figure out what data points we need to be looking at uh, to make sure that we're able, it's, it's much, you know, not very many of us get to operate with a $30.6 million checking account. Um, and so the complexities of putting that all together and knowing what information you're looking at um, knowing that we have, uh, obviously in our district, multiple buildings that are spending that budget. Um, it's not uh, an oversight of one person being able to spend that budget. As, as Lyle pointed out, we've got multiple administrators, multiple teachers uh, that are working from that pot. Uh, so what kind of information can uh, Mr. Coughlin and myself pull together to provide to Dr. Norris and the board uh, to keep that kind of 
uh, fine tune. You did point out many of the things that have been spent over the years were one time investments mm -hmm. uh, that will be uh, able to be utilized over a period of time. Um, I think the neat thing that we walk away from that is recognizing over the last handful of years we've increased the number of students that are gaining access to the Common Core in the general education environment. Um, we've increased our graduation rates uh, by over 20 some percent uh, for that population of students. And there was a time where uh, when you entered into special education, the ones would suggest that you basically were uh, signing your name on a line to suggest that you were entitled to a, a less inferior um, educational experience. And I think the fact that we've increased those graduation rates by the amount we have and increased the percentage of students gaining access to the core suggests that in our district um, you're put in a much better situation if you enter into special education to be able to move out of special education and move on in your career. Thank you, Dr. Barney, and, and thanks to everybody who was involved in working on this um, as well. Any further questions or discussion? If not, all those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. And the chair votes aye. Motion carried. And that concludes our action items on our agenda. So next, we're up for the superintendent's report, Dr. Norris. Just a, a comment about our uh, flurry of meetings the last two or three weeks. We've, yes. we've certainly uh, had a lot of uh, community task force meetings. The, the, uh, the turnout has been a little disappointing, but we have, some, we have a long ways to go yet because we set up a lot of meetings. And we also have some strategies uh, in play uh, that Tara and Crystal and, and others have put in place to even uh, bring in more stakeholders. The issue is uh, that it's, it's just important that we get out and, and talk to anybody that wants to talk to us about some of the, some of the potential changes in the future because it, it, it will be, um, it will be a, a critical move that we all make for the next uh, 20, 30, 40 years as we talk about uh, uh, changing up our high school. So we'll continue to uh, uh, ask people to turn out and uh, we'll continue to be there and, and answer their questions. Yes, thank you, Dr. Norris. And information from board members. Um, I might start on this side, if that's okay, with Sue Flynn. Sure, thank you. Um, I want to congratulate all the fall sports for a good season. Um, a cross-country runner, Sammy Sproul, made it to state for um, cross-country. Uh, she runs this weekend, I think. Um, yes. The West football team um, is in the playoffs uh, Wednesday night, Pleasant Valley. Uh, records are thrown out now, so we're all yes. zero and zero. Yes. So, um, and um, I just um, want to thank parents that took the time to go to conferences. Yes. And um, that's a critical and important time to communicate with your teachers. And I just um, also want to encourage people to attend the meetings and, and if you have a middle schooler, an elementary schooler, or a current high schooler, um, if you don't go to the meeting, don't say we didn't tell you because it's very informative yes. and um, it's critical to see what your kids are going to learn in the future. That's well said. Thank you, Sue. And Shayla McNally. I just want to piggyback on what you said about conferences. It, it may be the one time in, during the semester or trimester that you've talked with your uh, student's teacher or, or principal or whomever, but the door is always open, so even if you couldn't get there last week, I hope you'll make an effort to do so because they do really matter. Thanks. Great. Thank you, Shanley. And Mike Kinchy. I don't have anything this time. Right. All right. Thank you. And Lyle Schmidt. Um, just to reiterate or reinvite people to come to those meetings, it is important that we get a, a um, representative cross section of the community. This is your time for the input. Uh, I think the editorial board of the career did a good job. Yes. Uh, with the reason people ought to come to those. And I'd just like to comment on, on, on the bus drivers. Um, they really do, you know, I've probably have observed them more than anyone else on the board here. And they do a remarkable job. You know, they are the first contact every kid, kid that rides a bus sees in the morning, and they're the last contact at night. And it really does make a difference, and I just think we, we probably don't thank them enough, but, but I, my observation is they do a remarkable drive job, and yes, those kids do relate one on one to the bus drivers, and and those of you that have had kids ride the bus, I think, can testify to that. So, so it's extremely important. Um, I just wanted to make that comment. 
And lastly, uh, uh, just to know the safety, uh, be careful out there. It's, uh <laughs> Could someone uh, in the public find a, a job for Mr. Schmidt? Because when he was working at John Deere, he was extremely safe. <laughs> and now that he's been bicycling all over the country, he uh, something comes looking for him. Right? Yeah. You're on the mend, though, correct? Yep. Yes, which for that we are grateful, yes. Um, and lastly, I'd just like to echo what we've heard tonight about um, the turnout for the meetings um, that are going on. I encourage anybody to go to those regarding the, the high school task force, the 21st century task force. Um, regarding busing, there are a number of things going on um, that we are working kind of for continuous improvement um, and to improve it kind of wholesale. Um, what we're uh, um, what we're providing for our students um, also on turnout just to remind everybody of the next municipal election um, which is Tuesday November 11th we'll also have another board meeting um, uh, or I'm sorry it's excuse me it's Tuesday November is it fourth or third fourth um, is the fifth of November so good thing I, I had it written down um, the, uh, <laughs> it's the 5th. So I encourage everybody to get out and vote in the municipal elections as well. Um, there are a number of things on the Grout Museum, um, which, just like the Governor Blue Dorn, is, I think, a very um, important part of the community as well. They are on the ballot. Um, but just to remind everybody to vote. Um, our next meeting will be in two weeks um, at 6 p.m. on Monday, November 11th, here in the boardroom. Um, and if there's nothing further, I'd entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Thank you. And a second? Second. Okay. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. And the chair votes aye. Motion carried. Thank you all.